نحمده و نسلی علی رسوله الكریم اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشیطان الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم رب شرح لی صدری و جسر لی امری و حلل اقتتم من لسانی یفقه قولی رب یسر و لا توسر و تمم بالخیر آمین یا رب العالمین We finished the last lecture on some words including I'm going to write those words here Insan, insanun, if we fully vocalize this. Ikra, and let's write another one. Fi. Okay, so just to recap, we said that uh, insan. is noun ikra verb and this we defined loosely as particle okay so what is the arabic terminology so the arabic terminology is noun we call it ism ism ismun verb is fail failun and particle is harf harfun plural of ism is asmaun this is part of our vocabulary as well asmaun fail of a lun and half who fun okay so that's our terminology no any word which we throw out of our mouth with the help of our tongue is called lafz lafz lafzun lafz so lafz is arabic word the translation of which is in english is word okay and plural of that is alfa zun So lafz literally means to throw. So anything which we throw out of our mouth with the help of our tongue is called lafz. Okay. So lafz in Arabic could be either well any any language it could be either meaning full or it could be meaningless okay um those who live in in england uh, they are very familiar with this old bbc soap it's a kind of uh, old time classic and there is uh, the name of the soap is only fools and horses there is a character in 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 the soap uh, with the name of del boy and when the things go in his way he becomes very happy and he tends to say lovely jubbly okay so lovely is a meaningful word and jubbly don't know how to write it jubbly is a meaningless word so meaningful meaningless um but he would usually say it and uh, sometimes people on the 
street use the same words to show their happiness so kind of accepted normal meaningful word in Arabic is called kalima kalima ton and plural will be kalima ton so because in Quran and Hadith there is no meaningless word so this is not going to be the focus of our attention we are only going to focus on meaningful words so that makes life uh, a lot easier you can also see from here that uh, lafs the translation is word and kalima English translation will be word now if we examine that carefully every kalima is lafs but every lafs is not necessarily kalima so just seeing a word we will not know really what we are talking about whether it's lafs or kalima unless we say meaning full word and meaning less word so you know this is this language is really really logical um let me wipe this off so what we have said is that um, any meaningful word in Arabic is called kalima kalima tun okay so kalima is basically of three types it could be an ism ismun fail fail on or harf harf one we can translate these in english very easily ism is noun ism lit literally means name noun also means name fail is verb and half we loosely translated as the particle there's nothing equivalent of half in english so particle will do for now now in english uh, we have um, eight or nine parts of speech and here these are the parts of speech and there are only three so these are basically parts of speech so in Arabic there are three parts of speech ismun failun harfun and how come in English we have uh, eight or nine so that's not really a problem and especially some of the English speakers will say um, the basic parts of speech in English are also noun and verb and everything else just fills in and plays their role or its role under the category of ism which we have loosely translated as noun we have actually noun under this category the English noun and then we have pronoun we have ejective adverb and interjection (laughs) 
verb is just verb um, important bit is that uh, there is a tense in verb so it's past present or future tense under particle we are going to cover prepositions most English prepositions will come here um, conjunctions and in Arabic there are other words which come under the category of half but there is no equivalent in English really for example one of the words is inna we are all familiar with it because we read Quran inna inna is a particle of emphasis in Arabic wal asri innal insan lafi khusr yasin wal quran al hakim innaka lamin al mursalin so inna is one of the haruf as well but it doesn't fall under these two categories So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the definitions here um, because um, this is our foundation and our foundation will have to be strong and we are going to build on our foundation and without a strong foundation our building is not going to stand any chance. What is known? Noun is name of a place, person, thing, or an idea. Let me write down here. Noun. Name of person place, thing, or an idea, they all fall under the category of uh, noun. Noun has its own meanings, for example, we say Hamidun, the name of a person, we say Feelin Elephant We say Tiflin Child We say Langdanu the name of a place, Makkatu, the name of a place. Um, we say Kalamun, pen, the name of a thing. And uh, on top of that, all the emotions such as um, anger, affection, happiness, these are all nouns. So, what is a verb okay verb also has its own meaning but there is a tense as well noun doesn't have a tense verb will have a tense past tense present tense or future tense so for example we say nasara He helped. Past tense. We can say Yakra U. He reads. Present tense. So, um, well, will have its own meanings, but they will also be tense in that as well 
what about uh, the particle the half particle it has kind of meaning in itself but uh, to elaborate its meanings to express its meanings it is going to need the help of an other word it could be a verb or it could be a noun for example if i keep on saying in 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 doesn't really mean anything on the other hand if i say in the room so it makes sense if i say under 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 doesn't make sense if i say under the tree so then it makes sense so the particles need the help from an other word to express their meanings to make their meanings clear um, just a reminder here um, act of doing something is a verb but the action itself is not a verb uh, for example we say um, if I say I am reading a book so reading here is a verb and uh, it is present continuous tense it's a verb ongoing action if I say reading is difficult then the reading in that sentence let me write down I am reading a book this is verb reading is hard this is a noun if I say I work I'm working with the government working here is um, a verb and if I say working is hard so working then becomes a noun uh, in English, uh, there are different names which are given to this kind of nouns. Um, for example, gerund, um, we can say infinite. You can revise your English here as well. Um, we can say verbal noun. In Arabic, um, this is called Masdar. So, Masdar is a really very important concept in uh, Arabic. We also see Masadar in Urdu as well. Quran is full of Masadar and one day inshallah we will have a separate talk on the topic of masdar it is very important and we will know especially the difference between masdar and noun for example masdar is noun but then compared to ism i should say ism rather than noun so there will be a difference between ism and masdar both are noun okay so let me wipe this let's move on um, for correct use of a noun in a sentence we will have to be familiar with four aspects of a noun. I'm going to start the formal start of our Arabic grammar with noun. Um, most of you remember, certainly I remember that uh, when I started learning English, we started with verb. But in Arabic, um, because we can make sentences without verb in Arabic, so it's completely okay to start with noun and you will see that it will make sense to start with noun 
So I was saying that for correct use of a noun um, in an Arabic sentence, we will have to be familiar with four aspects of a noun. If we, we will have to examine a noun from four different angles. And if we are not familiar with these four attributes of a noun, we are going to make mistakes in the formation or formulation of sentences. For example, we will have to know whether a noun is definite or indefinite. Definite or indefinite. Okay, it's going up. Right. Um, in English, we loosely say um, proper noun. Translation of this are common noun. Common noun is okay, but proper noun is actually a category of definite noun. One of the categories of definite noun is proper noun, and we will see that there are other six other categories of definite noun later on. So, proper the concept of proper noun and common noun doesn't really apply here definite or indefinite and in Arabic we say marifa or nakira so from its definiteness point of view a noun will either be marifa or nakira and we will study this topic under the heading of Wus'a. Um, Wus'atun. We can translate that as capacity of a noun. In English, I remember we said um, the kind of noun or the type of noun, whether a noun is proper noun or a common noun. But that concept doesn't really apply here. We will have to say either a noun is definite or indefinite. Marifa or Nakira. And uh, the concept of Wus'a, its capacity makes sense here. For example, if I have 30 people sitting in front of me and I say, can Hamid fetch me a glass of water? So hopefully Hamid will go and bring me a glass of water. On the other hand, if I say, can someone fetch me a glass of water, please? So, the capacity here, the possibility here is one out of 30 now. Initially, our, uh, the, the capacity was limited. There was only one person. Hopefully, there was only one Hamid there. So, the capacity of that noun was limited. But when I said, can someone when it became nakira, when it became indefinite. So the possibility increased. Its um, capacity became wider. So common noun has wider capacity. Indefinite noun has wider capacity. On the other hand, indefinite. On the other hand, definite noun is bound to have a limited capacity. So we will look at this one day, this topic in detail. This is just the introduction. Um, next, we will have to know whether a noun is masculine or feminine. In English, most of the time, it doesn't really matter. In Urdu, it does matter to some extent. In Arabic, it always matters to know whether a noun is masculine or feminine. Masculine or feminine. In Arabic, we say, Muzakkar 
are Mu'annas. So we will have to know whether a noun is masculine or feminine. And this we are going to study under the topic of gender. In Arabic we call it jinns. So in Arabic from the gender point of view a noun is only of two types either masculine or feminine. There is no neutral gender in Arabic. And I have used the terminology masculine or feminine. I didn't say male or female. Male or female is more to do with the sex of a noun and it applies to humans and lower animals. Um, but in reality in Arabic every noun can have a gender which is which we call grammatical gender for example table chair book column they will all have gender and without knowing that uh, we will make mistake um, just a quick example here those who know Urdu uh, we want to say in Urdu the wall has fallen in English it doesn't really matter in Urdu if we say Diwar Gir Gaya that will make sense but grammatically incorrect because Diwar in Urdu is um, feminine so the correct way of saying will be Diwar Gir Gai. so the wall has fallen in English it doesn't really matter in Arabic this is very very important and after that we will also have to know the number of a noun number it could be singular or it could be plural but in Arabic there is a third category or type which is that of dual In Arabic, the plural starts from three. In all the other languages which I know, the plural starts from two. Singular is singular and two and then onwards, that's all plural. In Arabic, there will be a separate word for dual. And the plural starts from three. So singular is wahid. Wahidun. This will be tasniya. So many dots here. Tas niyatun. And plural will be jam'a. Jam'un. So from the other point of view, a noun in Arabic will be either singular, dual or plural. There is no fourth category. Okay. Now we are going to move on to the next aspect, the next attribute of a noun which is really really important. These are also important but that is the most important aspect of a noun and I'm going to be a little bit slow here and going to spend quite a bit of time on it because this is very important concept to get hold of. I'm going to write here three sentences. Hamid helped Zaid. Hamid and Zaid are going to be our friends really throughout. Zaid helped Hamid. Zaid helped Hamid's brother. Okay. If I ask you what happened to the noun Hamid here, 
you will say okay in this sentence Hamid is a subject in the next sentence Hamid is object and in the third one Hamid is neither subject nor object and then if I ask you can you say in a nutshell what has happened to what has happened to Hamid in these three sentences you may have to stop and think perhaps and then someone may come up with the answer that the status of the Hamid has changed in these three sentences here the Hamid is, is doer of the action of the verb here Hamid is a recipient or receiver of the action of the verb and in this sentence Hamid is neither the doer nor the done to okay so with this in mind I will say this change in the status of a noun in different sentences is called a rab a rab a rab a rab so that's the most important aspect of a noun which we will which we will have to be really familiar with um, okay let's go one step further I'm going to write three more sentences here I'm gonna write here he went to the market his car broke down A friend gave him a ride. Okay, so what I have done here is that I have changed Hamid into the relative pronoun. So he here is Hamid. Okay. Remember in Arabic, pronouns are also ism. They come under the category of ism. So noun is ism, pronoun is also ism. And in this example here, the ism has changed again in these three sentences. Here, he which is the same noun as Hamid is subject because clearly Hamid went to the market driving a car so he was driving car so it's a subject doing something doer of the action of the verb here Hamid is an object because Hamid is not active here someone else is helping and in this case Hamid is again in additional state uh, Hamid is mentioned here uh, because of his relationship to another noun because of Hamid nouns its connection to another noun Hamid as a noun if I use I will say its connection to another noun okay so again the status of Hamid has changed here but in these examples something else has also changed and what is that something if we focus here on he, his and him, we will see that the appearance of the noun, appearance of the ism has changed. How has it changed? The change has occurred in the end part of the ism. Not the initial part, but the terminal part of the ism, the change has taken place this ism ends here with e this ends with s this ends with m and that is very important in arabic 
having said all this I can redefine Arab and say change in the status of a noun accompanied by change in its appearance without any change in its meaning is called Arab meaning of the noun does not change Hamid is Hamid here Hamid here Hamid here status of Hamid has changed but not the meaning similarly here the status has changed but not the meaning and that's a very very important concept in Arab now the change which has occurred here um, this ism has ended in e so the case ending here is e in subjective case the ending is e case ending here is s the case ending here is m and this change in the appearance of a noun is called inflection and this inflection when it is applied to a noun is called declension and when this change of inflection is applied to a verb it's called conjugation so the nouns in Arabic they decline and if I wipe that off now and uh, write in a different way to make this point my children tell me that um, declension of nouns also occurs in other language it doesn't apply to English really Arab in English is I like you you like me that's all the Arab in English is French there's no Arab but children tell me that um, declension of nouns occur in German in Russian and in Latin for example but that declension which occurs in those languages is not really similar to Arab so Arab is unique to Arabic only the sister language Hebrew perhaps have some similarities but no other language has Arab let me write here these um, what has happened to Hamid here in these three scenarios so we said the case ending so the case ending the first one is called in English subjective case three cases clearly so the first one is subjective case the second one is um, objective case and the third one is possessive case this also test of your English spellings so this is old English terminology the modern English terminology is nominative case this will be accusative case and this will be genitive case and uh, what is the Arabic terminology Arabic terminology is um, Rafa state of Rafa Raf Un the state of Nasp Nasbun and the state of Jar Jarun and these names are also very logical uh, Rafa means to raise to be high up and a subject in a sentence is uh, 
in a higher state because the person is active the person who is helping others will be active going around making arrangements etc etc and those who are in a less favorable state they will be waiting for the help and just uh, sitting at one place so not as active kind of fixed at one place and less means to be fixed in one place for example electrical pole is nasp to the ground so objective case nasbun makes sense jar jar one means to pull down to drag along and uh, when hamad's car broke down hamad didn't broke down and because of uh, because his car broke down he was also dragged along and kind of became immobile not as active as he was when his car was okay so this is the arabic terminology um this is noun and uh, its uh, adjective form will be marfu halat e rafa we can also call it marfu mar marfu un this we can call its adjective form mansuban and this will be majrurun so in arabic a noun will be either in state of rafa state of nasb a state of jar or we can say in arabic a noun will be marfu mansub or majrur once we have become familiar with this terminology we will have to rub this up from our brain as well because uh, these have been mentioned here just to make a connection in our brain and remember this terminology because otherwise um if a noun is um, in a state of rafa will always be subjective case but on the other hand a noun which is subjective case is not necessarily going to be always in the state of rafa similarly a noun in nas will always be objective case but a noun which is in objective case is not necessarily always going to be in state of rafa and that applies here as well that a noun in state of jar will always be a possessive case but a possessive case is not always going to be in state of jar so it's uh, important just to remember that terminology and rub this off completely okay so let's look at um, what we have done up till now so if we look at hamid so hamid state of rafa hamid state of nasb hamid and state of jar is also hamid in english no change occurs pronouns in english may show change and this will be he and him here and majrur form will be his and when we write this in arabic hamid we will write in state of rafa we will write hamidun in state of nasb we are going to write hamidan and in state of jar we are going to write hamidin so you can see the change here as has occurred and it is in the terminal part the end part of the noun and this is in the form of dun dan and bin so the first part of the noun is the same in three states and the second part the appearance of the second part of the noun has changed so just to save time what i have done is i have written these states here 
right as some vocabulary so for example um, we can start from Hamid so it's Hamidun in Rafa Hamidun and Hamidin Kitabun book Kitabun Kitabun Kitabin Waladun Ladka Waladun Waladan Waladin Bintun Ladki our daughter Bintun Bintan Bintin We have here Jannatun Garden Jannatun Jannatan Jannatin Smaun Sky Smaun Smaan Smaan Ibrahim Ibrahimu Ibrahima Ibrahima Name of a person Jahannamu Jahannama Jahannama Masajidu is plural of Masjidun Masajidu Masajida Masajida And then we are familiar the, with these words Haza used for this demonstrative pronoun Haza 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 Allazi is a relative pronoun Allazi 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 very commonly used in Quran so what's happening here if you examine carefully up to here Sama'un there are three states and three forms three states and three shapes of the noun here on the other hand we have three states but two forms so the form of the noun in nasab and jar is the same and here three states only one form and the shape doesn't change in rafa nasab or jar so what we call these this will be up to here 85 percent of nouns will behave that way three states two forms 15 percent will behave like this three states two forms and two percent will be will behave like this three states only one form they will not change their shape at all um, but it will not really be difficult to recognize them in a sentence because in English it was very easy it's Hamid 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 in English and we knew when was Hamid subject when was Hamid object and when was Hamid additional in a possessive state so it is not difficult to make that out although we said he him his three different but if we use she that will be she her her and also in, in a sentence we can make out where her is what state objective or a possessive state so it becomes quite clear in a sentence the composition of a sentence the construction of a sentence uh, in the text before and after that we will know exactly in this case for example where does it which, which category does it fall Rafa Nasab Arjar and similarly these as well so we are going to study these two categories later on in detail um, there is another point which I want to make here at this stage and that is that um, if you look carefully here I'm sure you have noticed that already that when we write a noun in nasb we add alif this is a spelling rule okay it doesn't change the meaning of the noun it's just a spelling rule we add alif here so majority of the nouns will take alif at the end of the word in state of nasb however there are two exceptions to this rule there are rules and there will be exceptions so we are going to study rules and we are also going to study exceptions to, to those rules there will be only few rules there will be no exception at all but most of the time there will be exceptions 
So in this case, there are two exceptions. If a noun ends in tied up ta, the circular ta, then when we write in nasb, we do not add alif. <coughs> and the second thing is, if a noun ends in hamza and before that we have alif, again we do not add alif here. So these are two exceptions. On the other hand, you have also noticed here, I'm sure you have, that when in these, in this, in this category of nouns, when we write them in the nasab and the jar form, one, the appearance is the same, and second, when there is no mean, we do not add alif here. So, Ibrahimu, Ibrahima, Ibrahima, Jahannamu, Jahannama, Jahannama, no alif here. Masajidu, Masajida, Masajida. So this category is called Munsarif, that's another terminology, we will be using it in which um, the change occurs all along Munsarif, Munsarif and this category is called Garu Munsarif, Garu Munsarif, just remember the terminology. So, three forms Munsarif, two forms Gheru Munsarif and here these nouns are fixed. They are called Mabni, Mabni Yun, Mabni. So, 2%, so 85% are Munsarif. 15% are Gairu Mansarif and only 2% are Mabni. They do not change at all. In any circumstances, they do not change at all. Um, I know this uh, lecture has become longer, but just to make the final point and uh, make sure we understand what Arab is, I'm going to give you another example here. Let's wipe this off. So, from the Iraq point of view, noun will be one of three categories. Rafa, Nasb, or Jar, state of Jar. And I'm going to write a word Jannatun. Garden. Here it will be Jannatan and here it's going to be Jannatin. Okay, so the change has occurred in the end part, the terminal part of the noun and that's what Arab is. On the other hand, if I write similar words here like I will write for example Jinnatun is Radhan Fatha is Kasra here Jinnatun and another word will be Jinnatun with Dhamma Jinnatun Jinnatun is garden Jinnatun is madness you can see the word jinn in it I, I think jinnatun is madness and jinnatun is um, a shield a protection okay so what's happening here is that um, the change has occurred in the first part of the word of the noun that change is not Arab that change will change the meaning of the noun but Arabic change which occurs in the terminal part of a word of a noun that will not change the meaning of the noun it will only change the status of a noun in a sentence so I hope the concept of Arab has become clear here the concept of Arab is going to evolve as we go along on this journey of learning Arabic grammar 
just the last point before I stop. Uh, Imran Khan. This is not political at all, by the way. How do we write Imran? Imran we write with N. Imran Khan. So, when he was cricketer, he was Imran Khan. Now he is Prime Minister. He is still Imran Khan. So status of Imran Khan has changed, but the meaning of Imran Khan hasn't changed. I hope that has made sense to you. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashwadu Allah ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik.